Hey guys, it's Leanna and I'm here today to talk about Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. Uh, this book is pretty well known, I think, and uh, highly anticipated, and I think everybody on YouTube has already talked about it, and I'm very late to this party. But I finally read it um, after like pre-ordering 10 copies of it. Well, four copies of it, but that's still excessive for a book that I had no guarantee I would like. So yeah, Ninth House, if you don't know, is Lee Bardugo's first foray into adult fiction, and it's a dark academia with magic. Because Dark Academia does not necessarily, in fact, often does not have magic. But this is based on her experience um, in Yale. She went to Yale and there became familiar with the secret societies that are prevalent in Yale and then wrote a Dark Academia magical version <laughs> of those secret societies in Ninth House. I didn't really know what to expect going into it other than it's adult fiction, not YA. It takes place at Yale. And it's like modern day, which is different from her other work, which takes place in a fantasy world that is very old and old timey. That a lot of people were saying that there were like a, a ton of trigger warnings and content warnings. And I didn't really do a deep dive into like what exactly I was being warned about. But I knew that there was apparently some very adult content in here. So like everyone was saying like, this is our Bardugo's first adult, but it is very adult. And um, I would I would agree with that. So be warned, word to the wise, look up the content warnings before you're picking up this book if you are at all worried like about something being triggering to you because odds are it will be. This is, this is not poet's punches. So I don't really ever, there isn't really anything that I'm like that triggered by. There are things that I end up not liking but not to the point where like I need to avoid it. So I didn't look up at any specific content warnings before reading it. But again, if you are worried about that, you should look it up because I would imagine if I was very, very scarred and triggered by these types of events, this book would not be a good experience. <laughs> so yeah, I initially found it very difficult to get into. And I would, even after having read it now and, and giving it four stars and coming to the conclusion that I like it, there are things about how she structured it and how she paced it that I think hurt it. And if she didn't, ha if she hadn't done it that way, if she hadn't structured it that way, if she hadn't paced it that way, the book would be five stars because it has the potential to be. I think there's some really good things in it and it's holding itself back. And I don't know why she would choose to do it that way. I honestly don't. Um, so part of what really didn't like gel for me to begin with is that it's not mysterious. It's not at all mysterious. This book doesn't get mysterious until much later on. And I would think it would be the other way around. Like to me, a dark academia mysterious story should open with mystery. And then by the end, you've begun to piece it together. Here, it felt like the opposite. Here, when you start the book, your main character is aware of the secret societies, is already a part of the secret societies, already kind of knows. She's a novice, but she kind of knows all the rules related to the sort of magical necromantic powers wielded by the secret societies. <clears throat> She's fully aware, fully immersed. It's not a mystery. And there isn't anything really going on with the secret societies yet that is mysterious. So she's kind of just taking you through her daily life. And she's got a lot of emotional baggage, which that's kind of mysterious. Like you don't exactly know what all, all her baggage is, but she can see ghosts, which again, it's not like slowly revealed to you. You kind of know it from the get go. So I just, I kept in the beginning, I was reading it. And I was like, okay, I guess we just like know everything already fine. <laughs> you know, like it, it, it lacks that that experience of discovering something, which is what I feel like when I think of a mysterious academic setting, that's what I think of. I think of, of a school that looks, you know, from the outside, really put together and safe and professional and official and whatever. And that like through following leads and shadows and corners and mysterious things, that you begin to notice that something else is going on here and that, that there might be more to these secret societies than meets the eye and to discover that there's actually magic going on. And like, I think if it had been told that way, where Alex, you could even, uh, her name is Galaxy, <laughs> by the way, but she goes by Alex, understandably. Even if Alex already was aware of her own necromantic kind of, oh, I don't know if that's necromantic, but she can see ghosts, like she sees dead people. <laughs> She's literally Haley Joel Osment. If we started the book with her having that um, as like baggage, but she thinks she's the only one. And that um, if she was, because she's recruited to come to Yale because she has this ability. So arguably you can't have her 
not know that this is going on at the school because when you start the book she's there at the school because of this but it doesn't have to be written that way it could be written that she's recruited to come to Yale but she doesn't know why and that but she does know that she can see dead people and she's really afraid they're going to find out because she'll lose her place at Yale if she thinks that they find out that she's this weirdo that can see dead people and that she slowly discovers that the secret societies may or may not be involved with something like that and she realizes that that may be even the reason that she was recruited. Like that would have been so much more compelling and mysterious and would have been like that slow piecing together of information. But instead, we already know it all. We already know they exist, these secret societies. We know that's why she's there. We know she can see dead people. Like, I was like, I. there's no hook. There's no mystery. There's no like just creeping through shadowy corners, halls, mysterious passages and finding things out. Now, ultimately there is a mystery. Ultimately, because of the goings on of the secret societies, and it's told in kind of dual timelines. So, like, there is a mysterious disappearance that is related to the secret societies, and she's piecing together what happened. And, like, somebody dies, and she's trying to figure out what the society's involvement is in this person's death. So, she's, there's like a murder mystery and a disappearance that she's solving. But it takes away so much of the magic and mystery when part of the mystery isn't the secret societies themselves. The secret societies are just like a fact. They're already a feature. It's not part of the mystery. We already know the secret societies exist. We already know they are secret. We already know they do magic. It's just a matter of figuring out whether or not they are in involved in someone's murder. So you know how Harry Potter, like ultimately, once you realize that the wizarding world is a thing, like it's no longer the mystery isn't there that wizards exist. You know that. And now it's a mystery about what's going on in the school. And that's fine. But Harry Potter is better because... In the beginning, Harry does not know wizards exist. So you still get that beginning bit where he's like, why are there weird things happening? Like, you know, like when the owls start coming to his house and like he's able to do something to the snake in the zoo and he doesn't know why. Like that part of it where like the fact of magic is a mystery. And then once he realizes that magic is real, then he's discovering magic. And then he discovers there's something nefarious going on. And then he discovers like more and more. That builds over time. And we go from like whimsical mystery to sinister mystery and that this being an adult book it can start out sinister because she can already see dead people but if she's trying to keep that secret while also figuring out other people's secrets and then we could still have the murders and disappearances once she discovers the mystery of secret societies existing then have the mystery of the disappearance and the death you could do it that way and i don't know why it's not written that way like i don't know why you would not choose to do it because that would make it so much better so by the end of the book, I ended up finally <laughs> connecting with Alex because she's kind of a hard person to connect with. I did ultimately feel a connection with her as well as with um, her kind of like mentor within the secret society as the guy who's been kind of teaching her what they're about and like how they work and her Sherpa. <laughs> At first, like he was kind of a cold fish to me too. Like he seemed like a character out of a dumb tart book. But I, I felt like I was meant, to, like, with well, the Donna Tart, like, I don't feel like I'm meant to care about this character, so I don't care that I don't. Here I felt like I'm meant to care about this character. Um, at the end, I finally did. By the end, I did care. And by the end, like, the mystery, when it became an actual mystery, like, that hooked me and I was interested and it was done well. And the atmosphere was cool and I, I, I ended up enjoying it. And I gave it four stars. I just don't know why. You wouldn't capitalize on the mystery of this atmosphere, of this situation, of this place, of, of all of it. Like, it take, makes it so much less mysterious. Like, it's imagine if you started Harry Potter and he's already at Hogwarts. That would be so much less fun, right? Imagine if you started Lord of the Rings and Frodo already knows about the ring, already has the ring, and already knows and he needs to destroy it. You know what I mean? Like, yes, the rest of the story is interesting. But the discovery of this being the story is also interesting and makes it, that's what hooks you, that the fact that you've gone on this journey of discovery with the main character is what kind of allows you to form a bond with them because you and that character learned about this world together. And then now that you guys know about this world together, now you can go and explore it and discover what is what else is going on, what else is mysterious about it. But when your character already knows what's going on, I feel like then you feel divorced from them. You don't, you're like, well, they already know. So I guess they're telling me now, like, you know, so that's a really huge missed opportunity in my opinion. And the rest of it, yeah, again, super duper content warnings. Like there are some moments in it where like, it's clearly like a moment in the story 
where we are stopping to have this very adult thing where I was like, this is the part that I was being warned about. This is what this is. But peppered in throughout, there are multiple instances, like smaller brief instances, where it's just kind of like thrown in some like extremely adult thing that is just like there. And I was like, oh, okay, that's also, whoa, righty then. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all of this is very R-rated, okie dokie. So if that's gonna bother you, like, they are not exaggerating. <laughs> there are a lot of adult things in this book. So it is as adult as it really can possibly be. <laughs> so if that's gonna bother you even a little bit, don't read it. So yeah, that's my assessment of Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. This is a series. Um, apparently it's gonna be like five books. I've heard multiple, like, from different sources. I've heard it's gonna be two books. I've heard it's gonna be five books. I've heard it's gonna be 10 books. I feel like two to five is like, should be more than enough for what's been set up here. Maybe I have no idea. This is just the tip of the iceberg and there's just like so much more yet to be discovered for like 10 books. Great, if that's true, then sure, let's let's see where we go. But based on this, I can see another book, maybe another two books max. But we'll see. I'll definitely pick up the next one because again, I ended up enjoying it and now we're in the mystery. We're in the situation. So like the opportunity was only in the beginning and we missed it already. <laughs> so the rest of the books, like you know, Harry's already at Hogwarts. So we'll see where we go from here. Let me know in the comments down below if you read Ninth House, if you felt similarly, if you felt differently, if it was everything that you hoped and dreamed and it lived up or you were hugely disappointed with it. If, um, you know, if you hated it, if you loved it, if you felt it was mediocre, whatever you felt, whatever you thought, let me know in the comments down below. I post videos on Saturdays, sometimes Wednesdays, so like and subscribe. I'll see you when I see you.